So imagine you're deep in the wilderness and your snowmobile gets stuck in a massive trench. What do you do? But you were like... Do you sleep out there? No, you Or were do like... you walk out? I voted to walk out because like, it was going to be cold. Most people would have probably died. There was no food, but I was fine. <laughs> most people would have probably died, but I was fine. I feel like most people wouldn't have probably died. Well, I guess like most people probably would have died. Just to let you know. <laughs> so I was like up in Idaho for the thing to ski 31 of the 50 classics in a single season. Mm -hmm. And this was like the beginning of it. There are like four lines of the 50 classics that exist up in Idaho. Um, the sickle. On top of the sickle uh, here in Idaho the North Kular off McGowan, and Devil's Bedstead, and then the south face of Castle Peak, which is kind of more of a Kular. Um, yeah, so the sawtooths are on like one side of Stanley, and then the white clouds are on the other side. Um, <clears throat> and the white clouds are rather remote. It's a little bit far to get out there. It's like roughly 11 to 13 miles on a snowmobile up the 4th of July Creek. You go to the 4th of July Creek Trailhead to the proposed wilderness area and the white clouds. And then in order to get into Castle, you have to go over this one ridge and then ski down into the basin and you can see um, the west face of Castle. On our way up the first ridge to get a view of Castle Peak and the south face of south face of it Whew. snowed a lot more than I anticipated which is awesome but also something we gotta be careful of Amazing. 
think I'm in love. It's a wide angle GoPro, so you probably can't see it. Oh man, I came over that ridge. My track looks beautiful. <laughs> it just keeps getting better. All right, now it's time to go up. You went from a level of the All right, we're gonna do a nice ski cut. That was freaking amazing. Wow. Really hard to get up. But that skiing turned out to be great. That was awesome. Could not be more, more ecstatic about that one. I skied down. It was a very fun ski. Um, and then went back over the ridge that you go over to approach castle. Got back to my snowmobile, started it up, went about a hundred feet, and then fell into a tree well. It wasn't like totally dumb in my fault because the tree 
was like one of those mini pine trees that was just like completely covered in snow. And so my snowmobile just like sunk into this tree well. And I had gotten back to my snowmobile probably around like 4.30 and the sun was setting around 6.30. And after like a proper hour and 45 minutes of digging and trying to get it out, I think I dug a pit that was like the size of my van, but the snow was so unconsolidated that it was very, very difficult and didn't have any more food in my bag, which was like rookie mistake. Um, <clears throat> and then I kind of like very tired after shoveling, 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 shoveling and asked myself, do I want to sleep out here or do I want to try to walk back, walk out sans headlamp? in a bit of a snowstorm and I decided to to walk back the 12 miles in the pitch black no headlamp but the moon was actually shining kind of bright so I could see pretty well One of the funny things about it was that uh, it's like a completely flat road on the way in and it had continued snowing while I was out there and also like continued being windy. So my snowmobile track from coming in was completely covered. Um, so it was like, that's where I guess the intuition comes in because my watch had also died. Yeah, and so it was, just wandering out, um, it was kind of cold. My hands did get a little frost nipped because I made it about a mile away from the snowmobile and realized that I like forgot my mittens at the snowmobile because I kind of like dumped all my weight there because I was going to come back and get it out the next day with a friend, um, which we did and did successfully. And that was pretty easy. And just kind of like decided Yep, I'm just gonna walk and not stop the whole way. Didn't have any food. And I kind of opted for the like one skin on, one skin off. The good old scooty scooter. So I could do like push, slide, push, slide. Um, but it really was just a trajectory of like thinking about how fun the day was for probably like 15 minutes, then being like, <laughs> that was five hours. Shit, I'm cold. And then being like, okay, think about how, like, happy you are and think about your friends and stuff like that. So I thought about <laughs> Harry, thought about Tashi, and that lasted for probably about another 15 minutes. And then it was really just a fascination about food of, like, I'm really hungry. I would like to eat some stuff. And I remember thinking a lot about potatoes and mayonnaise which I didn't have back at the van, but that was like the dream. Like potatoes, mayonnaise, and eggs. I finally got to a point where I could like see the van, but it was, well, I couldn't see the van, but could see like a car that went down the road where my van was parked and was like, oh, I'm so close. But it turns out it was still like two miles away. I think it took me about five hours to get out. So left there around like seven when it was dark. I think I got back to the van around one or two. No. No grizzlies following you back. There aren't grizzlies in Idaho, but there are wolves. But yeah, I guess moral of the story is don't snowmobile by yourself further than you can walk out and what else? Put one foot in front of the other. Oh, that's really as far as it goes. No, yeah, well, it's a wide lens. Hell, yeah. That would be a little impressive, I think. Yeah, but what if the wolves got attracted by the snowmobile? <laughs> you know, I think that another another uh, end to this story mm -hmm. could be that you got back to your snowmobile and it sunk. And as you were walking back, you realized something was following you. 
and mm. you kept turning around and seeing footprints but nothing. Mm. Well, I didn't, I did like, I mean, when you're like walking in the dark for such a sustained amount of time all by yourself, like, and it's snowy and it's cold, you definitely have some like crazy thoughts of like oh, something is following me. And I did turn around a lot of time, like while I was walking yeah. kind of just like didn't break stride, but would be like looking behind me. I, <laughs> oh, one thing that I did leave out of the story actually is like, while I was walking back, I did bring my ice axe mm -hmm. and like how to, you know, quick. Yeah quick stowaway just like under my shoulder strap just in case I did run into a wolf.